<laughs> Please welcome to the stage, Kurt Braunhaller! Hi, everybody. It's me. Hey. Big Kevin. No, <laughs> Kevin with glasses. Big 80 miles. <laughs> It's two ladies and then three guys who are all just gingers. Okay. <laughs> all right, let's get started. I, um, I've only been in one bar fight my entire life. Um, and I know what you guys are thinking, like, what? You? Only one bar fight? You, the guy who looks like a middle-aged Muppet who works at IBM? You? <laughs> and it's true, only one bar fight. Uh, and the bar fight happened in Baltimore, Maryland, uh, where I lived for four years in the 90s. Uh, I love Baltimore, uh, but when you live in Baltimore, you kind of like love it and hate it. Like it is the place where The Wire was filmed. Like it's a fucking crazy place. Uh, my favorite thing about Baltimore, at least when I lived there, they had all these um, uh, bus stop signs, bus stop like on the bus, the seats of the bus stations. What are they called? Bus benches on the benches of the bus stops uh, had been painted on every one, uh, Baltimore, the city that reads. Uh, but every single one had been vandalized to read Baltimore, the city that breeds. Uh, but they just put a B in front of reads. So everywhere just said, Baltimore, the city that breads. <laughs> And it was 20% illiteracy late in the city at that point. Um, and now, now the bus stops in uh, Baltimore read, Baltimore, greatest city on earth. <laughs> Which I love a bold lie. I love a fucking bold, <laughs> commit to it. You know, like, what is it gonna be next? Like, Baltimore, every citizen has a gold toilet. You know, it's like, <laughs> make it specific and grand, Baltimore. And so I'm living in Baltimore, I'm in my 20s, and, uh, and, and we wanna go out for a night on the town. Uh, and uh, we wanna go dancing. And I wanna go to this bar that I love, and the reason I love it is it's my favorite bar in Baltimore because they put ice in the urinals. And, um, and ladies, I don't know if you know this, but sometimes bars put ice in the urinals, and I love that. <laughs> because then I can imagine that I, my penis is a laser and I'm just destroying Eskimo villages from space. So we go to this bar and it's in a part of town called Hamden. And Hamden, in, uh, in the 80s, Hamden had a big mental uh, institution there. And then Reagan was like, we don't need mental institutions. And so he shut them all down. And then literally the, the mental institution in Hamden was just like, open the doors, like you're free now. And all of the lunatics like walked out of the mental institution and just moved into the neighborhood. Uh, but previous to that, it had been like a big lesbian, like kind of enclave, enclave? <laughs> I'm gonna stick with it, enclave. I'm half French. And so, and so it was just lesbians and lunatics. That was all of Hamden. I remember there used to be this one guy who would stand on the corner in Hamden, yet he would only wear a bathrobe, and in his hand he would have like a bunch of different types of brushes, like toothbrushes and hairbrushes and paintbrushes, and he would just scream, personal hygiene, one dollar! I love that guy. Like you would walk up to him and give him a dollar and brush your teeth, like I don't know. But that was the kind of place Hamden was. And so this bar is in Hamden and we go there, we go there to dance and the DJ there, his name is DJ Jazze, which is a name I would make up for him if I wanted to make fun of him. But he's already chosen it for himself. And, um, and he's not a great DJ, and so uh, we were like, this music sucks, we're just gonna get very drunk. And we got very, very drunk. And at 2 a.m. when bars, bars close in Baltimore, we, everyone gets kicked out of the bar, and there's a whole bunch of people on the, on the side of the street. And, uh, and uh, I'm drunk with my friend, and my friend leans over to me, and he's like, hey man, I 
think DJ Jazz A just called you a douchebag. <laughs> I don't know why he said that. DJ Jazz A was pretty far away. I don't think he could have heard him if he said it. But uh, I was really into spelling things at the time. Don't ask. And uh, my, my response at that moment at 2 a.m. was just to start scream spelling douchebag back at him. Just like D-O-U-C-H-E-B-A-G, D-O-U-S-C-H-E-B-A-G. Like I don't even know how to spell douchebag. But I just continued to do this and agreed why I was doing that is confusing. But why DJ Jazz A chose to take offense is still beyond me. But he did and he started to approach me and like, and now I'm still scream spelling douchebag in his face, which you can understand is very upsetting at that point. And he like gets in my face and I was like, oh no, I'm gonna have a fight. And I'd never been in a fight in my life before. And I was like, well, we gotta come up with a plan. So my plan is, is that I decide this beforehand. I'm like, I'm gonna fly through the air and attack his soft middle parts. <laughs> End of plan. Because in my head, like, that's what a bear does when it attacks, you know? It just wants to flip you over and paw you open so I'll get all your insides out, you know? So that's what I'm gonna do, like, his vulnerable areas, you know, his belly. Uh, and, uh, and he, and like, he, like, you know, he's in my face and he pushes me and I get a little bit off balance, but I'm like, enact the plan. <laughs> and I, I leap, I leap at him. Like, leave the ground completely. Like, just jump like this. And if you talk to anybody uh, who's a fighter, they'll tell you, first thing, uh, rule of fighting is keep your legs on the ground. <laughs> Gives you a place to hit from or run away from. I leave the ground completely. <laughs> but I'm a little bit off balance because he's just pushed me. So I, not, I don't connect with him at all. <laughs> I just kind of graze his side and fall to the ground, uh, spraining my wrist and taking the skin off my arm from here to here. And now I'm on the ground and I'm fucking furious. Because this is my first bar fight and all of my injuries are self-sustained. And I... And I remember being on the ground and having the very specific thought of like, what if my children saw this moment? Like, what if my, what if Franz and, and Kafka get into a time machine? I don't have children, that's what I would have named them. Get into a time machine and then go back and visit the most embarrassing moments of their father's life. Like, that's the legit thought I have on the ground. And I hop up and I'm yelling. And, I, uh, and at this point, I think DJ Jazz A was like, oh no, I have engaged with someone who is not well. <laughs> and I, I like grab him uh, like in a way that I think is like a, like a headlock, but it's not, because I just have him like around his middle. So his head is this way and his butt is this way. And I just got like a nice firm hold around his tummy. And then my first thought is that I'm gonna walk him over to this phone booth on the corner. It's about 15 feet away. Uh, this is 1999, it's a stand-up phone booth with a door and everything. And like, I don't know what I was gonna do. I was like, kick some ass and make some calls. Like, I don't know. But I was like, first thought, best thought. Like, gotta commit. At this point, you know, we're just kind of waddling over to the phone booth. And it takes long enough for both of us to be like, what is happening? <laughs> Why are we fighting? This escalated quickly. And I think what I was gonna do is I think I was gonna like smash his like head into the, to the, I don't know, the phone booth, but his arms are totally free. 
So I go to do that, and he just kind of pushes the door open, and then he kind of gets pushed in, and then I'm holding him, so then I'm in, now, now we're in a phone booth together. And so I'm in a phone booth with a man who's named himself DJ Jazz A. I'm bleeding, the lights come on, and we can't, there's no fighting anymore. You can't, can't get any purchase with your, cause it's a, it's a box. And I don't know whose idea was first that we we're, that we we're gonna like headbutt each other. Like we both were like, that's the only thing left to do. But we both kind of like fucked up the timing of it and ended up just kind of like smashing mouths together. <laughs> so I'm in a phone booth, DJ Jazz A, I'm bleeding, the light's on. It's a far too intimate space for a fight. And uh, it's my first bar fight and I just kissed a dude. <laughs> And then our friend, like, we bust out of the thing and his friends grab him and my friends grab me. I'm like, yeah, that's right. You get out of here or else next time I'm gonna suck your fucking dick. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why I don't get into bar fights anymore. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.